Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Esports Broadcasting Network, where tonight we have on tap two of the most historic asphalt dirt crossover tracks coming right at you with both the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series and the DOB Big Block Modified Series. The first of those two is right here in beautiful Brazelton, Georgia, the former Lanier National Speedway, which is being kept alive by the amazing iRacing servers, and you're going to see a glimpse of it right here tonight with the Countryside Stove and Chimney Dirty Old Bastards 410 Sprint Car Series. My name is Ryan Williams. I will be joined not only by Mr. Sam Cooper Bennett up in the control booth, but as well as Mr. Ben Bruno. Ben, good to be back here with you tonight. Last week, I was not able to make the call. Two decent shows I've heard about, but we're expecting a whole lot more here tonight from this big, wide-sweeping Lanier National Speedway. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's always a pleasure to watch these guys and get to call these races for them as they always put on a great show. But one of my favorite tracks here tonight, the past couple we weeks have been filled with my favorite tracks. Lanier, another really small bull ring, which is more accustomed to what I have around me here. It's my style of racing, and I'm excited to watch it again this week. Well, this being the prelude to the points championship night for both series next week at the dirt track at Charlotte. Charlotte, obviously, probably my second to third favorite dirt track probably second favorite on the iRacing services right behind Knoxville but next week at Charlotte we're in for two absolute barn burners and speaking of the points race it can all be wrapped up tonight by one of the lone members of that Black Bumper Brigade in this server right now Mr. Rusty Kruger who currently sits 64 points ahead of Mike Keegan so with a good run here tonight Kruger can all but Lock up a points championship with the Dirty Old Bastards Countryside Stove and Chimney 410 Sprint Car Series. And so far, Kruger, one of the fastest here in open practice. Currently second quick at 11-1-3-3 with Steven Goldner, your fastest man so far. Absolutely. And you know what's crazy is only 10 races down, 50% win percentage for Rusty Kruger, so he's absolutely dominated all weekend. We saw Cameron Merriman start to challenge him at the midpoint of the season, and uh, it's been all Rusty since. Merriman got caught up with a couple of other series that he had been running, such as, I believe he is running the, the prelude to the Spring Fling tonight over on for uh, the Team VLR channel, which is currently underway. They are wrapping up their prelude to the spring fling here momentarily which could mean that we'll see a bunch more cars joining us for our second portion of the night which will be the big block modifieds at the former usa international speedway as we say that they'll go into a quick drivers meeting right before qualifying and ladies and gentlemen it'll be time to see some lightning quick qualifying times come across here from the linear international or the linear national speedway and while we do that, Ben, I'll turn it over to you. What what did we see last week, and who were the guys that we were watching battle it out for this 410 Sprint Car Series? Yeah, it was a really, really great race last week. Uh, Rusty led 41 laps, or I'm sorry, 17 of the 41 laps. Jake Greenwood had a really solid night. Um, Kyle Stoltz finished third, Chris Roberts in fourth, the host of the league. Um, but... Vinny Sansone, uh, 23 laps led last week, unable to get the job done. I think that he ended up catching some damage that took him to the back of the pack. A lot of first lap qualifying times, they're pretty, pretty slow as they're about four tenths off of their practice times. A lot of guys ran the high side of the track to try and gather up some momentum. You see Kruger coming in there quick time so far at 11.5. 7-1 outdone by Michael he Heileman right there. Not sure if he's in relation to David Heileman. That's a name I know from the IA Racing community. Jesse Bandy's in there, top five. Curtis Merriman, father of Cameron Merriman, 
who was a winner of, I believe, three races in a row for this 410 Sprint Car Series. He comes in second quick so far. Jesse Bandy, Adam Elby rounding out your top five with Darren Detweiler, Stevitt Goldner, Jake Greenwood popping in at a quick time. So they're trading quick time back and forth here as Mike Keegan takes to the track in his X machine. I was just going to say that he joined the server pretty late there. Fortunate to see him get back out on the track because it's always a, a show between him and Rusty and Jake and really a handful of guys, but glad to have Mike tonight. Oh, 100% here. Greenwood's still top of the board. Keegan, slow lap number one, but he's going to gather up for lap number two and comes in at, I believe, about 10th quick. He'll roll off sixth in heat number two. So right now, heat number one will be your first out. We'll see two heat races here tonight, eight cars apiece for going to the feature from those, well, four and four, and then we'll have a series of consolations to make up the rest of the field, I do believe, unless it gets skipped due to the iRacing service and how many drivers are in the session. But heat number one, as you're seeing on the screen, will line up with Jay Greenwood alongside Curtis Merriman on row number one, Jesse Bandy, Adam Buchanan, row number two, Stevan Goldner, Randy Shreves, row number three, Chris Roberts, Kyle Stoltz in your fourth and final row. I'm going to want to watch out for Greenwood. Always quick. Quick qualifier puts him on the point of heat number one. As Ryan mentioned, he can get clean air. Should be smooth sailing for him, but Curtis Merriman wasn't a whole lot slower of a qualifier at 11.569. So some real heat here in this first heat. Chris Roberts, Kyle Stoltz, Jesse Bandy, Curtis Merriman, Jake Greenwood. It's going to be a good show. Oh, 100% is. Greenwood, a driver who we've seen take home a victory this year with this 410 Sprint Car Series, and it's also been very, very close with the Big Block Modifieds multiple times. So Greenwood, he's always fast, and tonight here looks to assert a little bit of his dominance over the likes of Kruger, Merriman, Detweiler, and the rest of the crew, including Keegan here. As the iRacing pace truck comes around, looks like we'll get one to go at the line there as the lights go out. So... A week from our last DOB race here on the ESPN Broadcasting Networks. It's time to get right back at it here. We've got two races left on the season. Oh, man. The ex anticipation is killing me here as the Iron Racing pace truck pulls off. Greenwood fires. Here we go. And all smooth sailing so far for Greenwood. A really good jump, as Ryan mentioned. And everybody getting real stacked up through the rest of the field. Three wide into turn three. They're pretty stacked up. We had three wide at the back for just a moment. Greenwood out by about six car lengths over Bandy, who leads Merriman right now for second. 44 machine. He's throwing his hat up in the mix there as he slides right in front of Merriman's number 71. Merriman gets his position back down the front straight away here as they head back into turn number one. In the 44 car of Adam Buchanan making the bottom work hard and he's working hard for it. There's a lot of momentum to the top side. Steven Goldner in that 30 car following around Curtis Merriman. Looks like he's gonna have a good shot as they're gonna go Four wide into the front stretch. They pile out into a two-by-two. Two. Not quite four wide, but we had three for a while there. Oh, Buchanan. Oh, 57 of... Oh, they make a little bit of contact, and that causes a big melee behind them. One car falls back behind everybody else. So we've got a new third-place member there. Your top four right now, Greenwood, Merriman, Bandy. I believe that might be Chris Roberts throwing his name up there as we head into the white flag lap here. It's Greenwood, Merriman, Bandy, Roberts. Keep your eyes on the transfer spot. There could be another battle for it off of four. It's going to be Greenwood taking the win here. Oh, man. It was Merriman, Bandy, and Roberts holding off the hard charging Kyle Stoltz. Adam Buchanan, tough luck for him as he falls two spots short. He was up there in fourth. Fell a couple of spots short. Oh, wait, we went 10 laps for the heat race tonight instead of the normal eight. 
So they're coming around to take the white flag. Or they are on the white flag leg this time. And now the race comes to an end the same way I thought it had ended before. It's the 43 of Greenwood, the 71 of Roberts, the 57 of Bandy, and the 93 of Stoll. Or, ah, good lord. And the 93 of Roberts going straight to the feature there, finishing top four. Buchanan, Treves, Stoltz, and Goldner rounding out the rest of the field. Ben, why don't you run down heat number two for us, buddy? The first row is going to see Michael Heilman and Rusty Kruger on the outside of him. Second row comprised of Adam Elby in the 74 car and Darren Detweiler in the three. Kevin Hanley going to start fifth. Mike Keegan, sixth. Aaron Schaefer, 7th, and Vinny Sansoni going to route out the field in 8th. So weirdly off qualifying times coming in from both Keegan and Sansone. Or Sansone, Sansone, if you know how exactly he says his last name, let us know down in the comments below. We love interacting with all of you guys. Go ahead. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us who you think is going to pull off this 40-lap feature win here tonight from the Lanier National Speedway. But as you said, it's Michael Heileman getting the jump on Kruger here. He will start on the pole as the iRacing pace truck comes around to get the lights turned out and we will go racing next time by. An action packed heat race number one leaves you to expect that this one's going to be an absolute thriller as we had quite the battle for the four spot as they're heading down into turn three and we'll see the iRacing pace truck dip off. And we're green flag racing with Michael Heilman out front of Rusty Kruger. Like you said, Heilman got the whole shot in there into turn number one. Kruger gonna fire right back on the inside. Kruger with a slide job right up in front of the 911 of Heilman. Heilman gonna return the favor. Slide job from Heilman. We got more slide jobs coming right in behind him. Adam Elby back there battling with Darren Detweiler and the 110 of Kevin Hanley. They're throwing sliders back and forth. 911 getting some pressure from the 74 of Elby. Or, yeah, from the 74 of Elby who slides up into third place. Big note I was just received. I just received from your race director. Everybody will transfer to the feature. And they're not going to run a consolation race here tonight. So everybody just needs to jostle back and forth to see where they're going to start in the 40 lap feature coming up later on tonight as we work into lap number five. And Rusty able to pull out to four tenths of a second lead over Heilman. Like you said, LB in the third spot. Detweiler in fourth. He's got a little bit of breathing room on Kevin Hanley. But Kevin Hanley's always fast. Look out for him in the big block modifieds later as well as he's got a really big run on Detweiler and he's gonna take a peek to the bottom. One driver to mention here, the 77 of Aaron Schaefer has pulled off of the racetrack. He's no longer in the field. Sansone and Keegan back there fighting like heck for last place right now. Hanley trying to do battle with Detweiler, who's pulled back away from him. And we've still got a jumble of cars here battling for positions one, two, and three. Here working into lap number nine, the 911 is going to have one more crack at the five machine of Kruger. And that's also going to give the 74 of LB a shot as Heilman's up on the top side trying to gather some momentum here. White flag waves for the five of Kruger. And Heilman never letting, letting Rusty get out of his sights, but Rusty proving to be just a little bit too quick for him as he's going to pick up the win for heat race number two, followed by Michael Heilman in second, Adam LB in third, Got to get this resorted. Sorry. Darren Detweiler in fourth. Kevin Hanley in fifth. Mike Keegan sixth. Vinny Sansone in seventh. And as you had mentioned, unfortunately, sorry, the file just gave me up. Aaron Schaefer unable to finish heat race number two. That is correct. It looks like they're going through their redraw right here before the six. Shooter Dash here, Jake Greenwood drawing a four. Rusty Kruger will start third. He drew a three. Oh, it looks like they're putting in their numbers for the redraw, so we will find out. This is always the most 
interestingly, uh, slightly annoying part of the night because we don't exactly know where they're going to start because they don't give us a list ahead of time. But I assure you guys at home, we will find out where these guys are going to start in the six-person dash here momentarily when they roll out onto the track. If you'll just stick with us for one more second. But like we said, you saw Jake Greenwood cruise to a heat race victory earlier tonight over Curtis Merriman. Uh, I'm presuming that that is Curtis and not Cameron. Curtis being the father of Cameron Merriman here with a good run so far for Curtis. He finished second in the heat, and he's going to start pretty, pretty early on in this six-shooter dash. You've got Kruger, Heilman, and LB going to the dash from heat race number two. Hey, uh, can we take a quick second here? Uh, something that I haven't heard you talk about yet tonight, Ryan. How's that uh, tattoo coming for Sam for uh, the YouTube subs? He's trying to get it uh, organized with some of his tattoo parlors around him. They're out, they put him on a bit of a waiting list, so it might be just a little while. But we will keep you guys updated at home on Sam Cooper Bennett's tattoo fiasco, as well as, I believe, Byron Rodney and Mr. Tony Trapasso will also be participating in that. Okay, so it looks like Curtis Merriman and Jesse Bandy in the front row, Adam Elby and Jake Greenwood, followed by Rusty Kruger and Heilman. So the green flag flies here. They're going to do six laps the distance here. LB fighting with Kruger already, who's made his way from the back row. We got beating and banging going on behind him as there was contact between, it looked like, <laughs> it looked like a lot of people there, actually. Jihad Merriman still out front here, I do believe. That's Jesse Bandy out front. Adam LB right now second. Rusty Kruger. Followed by Jay Greenwood, Michael Heileman, Curtis Merriman battling for the fifth position back there right now, as well as Greenwood now challenging Kruger for third. Battle for the lead here. 57 to the inside. Throws a slide job there on Adam Elby. Elby right back around him on the bottom as the 57 makes contact with the wall here. Coming to the white flag for the dash. And Jay or Greenwood to capitalize on that little wall tap as well. And Rusty Kruger going to make his way around on the bottom. As you can see, the track's starting to get pretty slick there in the middle. Going to make things interesting heading into the feature. Well, that's the white flag there. They're on the last lap. It's going to be a challenge from Greenwood to the bottom of LB. LB slides way up the racetrack, almost makes contact with the wall. He's going to possibly give it away. Let's see the ruling here. Not exactly sure who they've given that to yet. It was dog eat dog, neck and neck at the line. Looks like they're going to give it to the 43 of Jake Greenwood here. As Greenwood will start on the pole for the feature event, followed by Adam Elby there. They were neck and neck at the line. You could not have put a piece of paper between those two cars. It would be touching both cars at the exact same time. I didn't see one in front of the other there, so... Good eyes by the race director crew for figuring out who got it in front of the other. What a six-person dash we just saw. In a photo finish for sure. Went back and watched it a couple of times. Uh, maybe one of the best finishes to, to a race, no matter what it was that I've seen so far. Obviously, a lot of really great action, but as, as close of one, I don't know. Oh, that's... 100% right as, as those two guys they, they fought hard LB just got a little too loose a little too high up the track there in turn number four and, and albeit gave it away there at the very end to Jake Greenwood so Greenwood gonna start on your pole and right now some fast guys out on the track taking some practice before we get into our 40 lab feature to cap off the night for the, B, the DOB 410 sprint car series presented by Countryside Stove and Chimney. They're also brought to you by ABR Setup Shop, old Alex Bergeron over there putting out some great, great setups. You can hit him up at abrsetupshop.com. They are also brought to you by Butt Kicker and Design Metal Art. And ladies and gentlemen, 
We here at ESPN are brought to you by DieCastNuts.com. Post your all DieCast collection. Trade in the shop or view other people's DieCasts. And you can also post your own DieCast collections for sale as well. All at DieCastNuts.com. We are also brought to you by Rocket Racing Setups. The leading setup. Tuning guide, tire sheet, whatever you want to call it. The leading setup shop for the entire Irish community. Right at RocketRacingSetups.com. And on Facebook at Rocket Racing Setups. Go check them out today. Check our flag flies for the warm-up session. And just like that, we're getting right into your first feature event of the night here on the Esports Broadcasting Network. The DOB 410 Countryside Stove and Chimney Sprint Car Series is coming at you live as they head to the grid. And it's going to be a good one. You can see the track having picked up a ton of rubber in the middle that makes things interesting because you got to be a little bit more dedicated to the line that you're going to run because you can't lose that momentum coming off the turn so it should be a really good feature here tonight i'm pretty excited oh no doubt this track's going to get pretty dry slick as we move on in the night so they should should see two to three lines of racing for the entirety of this 40 lap feature here with Jake Greenwood rolling off from the pole. So Greenwood's kind of ass asserted his dominance, so to speak, coming from the back to the front in the six-person dash. But Adam Elby is going to be a close competitor all night long, and you can never forget about Rusty Kruger there as they pull off for their parade lap while they get relined up with We'll leave Greenwood on the pole with LB to the outside. Second row is going to have Rusty Kruger and I believe the 57 in it. And we're going to find that out in just a moment here as they realign. Again, it is Greenwood and LB. Second row Kruger and the 57 machine of Bandy. Row number three. I believe you have Merriman on the outside. 911 of Heilman on the inside. And then behind them. You'll find the 93 of Chris Roberts alongside Darren Detweiler in the three for row number four. Row number five will be Adam Buchanan alongside Kevin Hamley. Row number six, Randy Shreves, Mike Keegan. Row number seven, Kyle Stoltz, Vinny Sansone. And the final row with Stevan Goldner and Aaron Schaefer alongside of him. 40 laps the distance. We're going green off of turn number four. The I racing pace truck gonna make its way in. Greenwood to the loud pedal first. LB right to the bumper. Kruger already taking a look to the inside. And you can see just how racy this track is right now. All the way through the track, two and three lines of racing. As we pointed out just a little while ago, we're going three wide down the back straight away for about the 10th position. Four wide at the front here with the 93 of Roberts peeking his head in. You've got LB up there fighting with the five machine of Kruger and the yellow flag waves here early. Looks like it'll be the 57 of Bandy charged with the caution there as he pulled into the pit road without a hood on his machine. Let's see exactly what happened there. A hard lick into the outside wall for the 57 of Bandy. Just overdrove it. Luckily for him, nobody else involved. So Bandy will be your first person possibly out for the night here from the Lanier National Speedway with no fast repairs on the cars. And after being four wide for the second spot, Rusty Kruger going to be the big winner of that ticket up to the point now after starting third or fourth, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember which one it was. Greenwood in third, LB in second, sorry, skipped right over him. Michael Heilman up to fourth, Chris Roberts fifth, Adam Buchanan sixth, Randy Shreves eighth, Kyle Stoltz ninth, and Curtis Merriman rounding out the top ten just three laps in. Just like that, we're going back, green flag racing. The five is the first one on the loud pedal, gets a whole shot into turn number one. LB right in behind, Greenwood going to challenge him once again as well. And then you've got Michael Heilman being pressured by Chris Roberts of the 93, who's working the bottom side of the racetrack here. Kruger on the very, very tippity top 
of the track right now as well. As I'm trying to catch back up to him here. Randy Shreves, Buchanan, all them fighting back there for about the 10th position. New leader going into turn number one right now. It's Adam Elby. And that's the battle that I was watching, Ryan. Randy Shreves working on the inside, able to get around Adam Buchanan as the 911 of Heilman kind of getting piled up here back in this battle, kind of holding him up for the time being. Kyle Stoltz just in front of him in the top five right now. Jake Greenwood working to the top side of Chris Roberts into turn one. That's exactly right. We still got a battle for the lead here. Kruger back to the inside. Adam Elby stuck up there on the high side. Kruger won't let him get down. The rest of your top five are all running the bottom line here with the 56 of Randy Shreves being the only one in the middle of the track, and that's proving dividends right now as he's pulling up to the backside of your fifth place man, Stoltz, and to the backside of the 43 of Greenwood, who was dominant earlier. And right now, Greenwood trending in the wrong direction here as we work down lap number 10, coming to 11 this time by at the line. And Kyle Stoltz, one of our biggest movers from 13th to 5th right now. Chris Roberts also from 7th to 3rd as they're battling side by side behind him. Almost three wide now with Greenwood's Stoltz and the 56 of Shreves as they're making that middle momentum work, but a lot of life left in the bottom of the speedway. Sliders being thrown down left and right at the front of the racetrack. LB got him by the five of Kruger once again after Kruger threw a big slider and turns number, number two last time by, or turn number three last time by. So it's LB back out front. Here comes Chris Roberts on the inside of the five of Kruger. Roberts content at the bottom, not going to slide up in front of him. That's going to allow Kruger to take all that momentum on the high side, go right back around here as they are all still trailing Adam. LB, Kyle Stoltz gets around the 43 and the 56 machines. As the 43, ooh, a little wheel hop from the 56 on the 01. 43 of Greenwood all up into the wall on the high side here. So a lot of guys not afraid to flirt with disaster on the high side so far. But it's Chris Roberts looking like the best man right now working the bottom side of the racetrack as he's gotten around the number five of Kruger who just ate the outside wall but kept her going in the right direction. I was just going to say he's playing the oh, mm. big contact between Stoltz and Kruger. Kruger able to get that car moving the right direction pretty swiftly, see if he can salvage it as Greenwood looking to take advantage of that. A handful of cars in Shreves and Stoltz able to get around them, and he's he's going to have to do some work now. Well, Chris Roberts better make up his mind very quickly because the bottom of that racetrack is fading fast here. Roberts making it work for now, but you can just kind of look at it and tell that rubber is starting to be placed down on the very bottom of the racetrack, so Roberts is going to have to either move up or pedal that thing like there's no tomorrow up at the front of the racetrack. It's LB who's stretched out his legs just a little bit here right now with about a seven tenths of a second advantage over Chris Roberts in second. Kyle Stoltz now in third. So a different top three that we're used to seeing here for the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series with Rusty Kruger now making his way back up there. Gets right around Stoltz. And right behind them, another three-wide battle. It's the 110 of Hanley, the 56 machine of Shreves, and the 43 of Greenwood battling back there for the fourth position, fifth position, and sixth. And just past the halfway point, Rusty wasting no time. He is playing hide-and-seek yet again with the wall. See if he can get around there. As you can see, he is ever so slightly dragging the right rear on the wall it's absolutely ridiculous he is pushing that thing for everything that it's worth and adam elby out to two seconds lead last time by but like i mentioned earlier chris roberts just a really fast car here tonight is rusty able to make work of him on the outside the crazy thing here is is that we are almost two seconds slower per lap time than we were in qualifying. Adam Elby currently running 13.4s, 13.5s, 13.6s. When in qualifying, he was down in the 11.574 bracket. So a lot slower lap times here. That just goes to show you how quickly these tracks change. And speaking of it, Adam Elby now a 2.3 second advantage over Rusty Kruger and Chris Roberts. 
still in your top three with a lot of action still brewing for that third position there between Roberts and the 01 of Stoltz. And right behind him, Randy Shreves, Darren Detweiler, Jake Greenwood, and the 110 really in a heated battle. They were four wide a couple laps ago, now two by two, but this battle's ready to break out. Oh, at 100%. As with Detweiler currently being the man who's escaping the pack here, he's still got that 56 machine of Streaves right behind him. We had one just get into the wall that I heard, but I don't quite see who it was, but everybody else still chugging away here. One caution in the books so far. 30 laps down, making it 10 to go next time. By at the line here for the DOB. Countryside Stove and Chimney 410 Sprint Car Series. We look back behind Detweiler. There's a battle brewing for the sixth position. It's Shreves on the inside, the 110 of Hanley on his outside. Hanley has a big run to get around the 56 of Shreves and the biggest loser so far tonight, Jake Greenwood. He's right there behind those two. And Vinny Sansone having to call her quits early. Didn't quite see what happened. I heard you say that you heard somebody get into the wall, possibly him. Maybe we'll take a look at it, back at it. Maybe not, but all after the Melby followed by Rusty Kruger, who he, he started to chip away a little bit now, uh, was 2.7, 2.5, now 2.3, so slowly picking away as he's driving away from the 93 of Chris Roberts. Well, the cool thing here is we've got two Swindell Speed Labs drivers in the top two. LB, an OG Speed Labs driver, Kruger, a rather newer Speed Labs driver. So right now, LB trying to show Kruger the way around this linear national speedway. He's got about two and a half seconds over the number five machine. And then it's another two seconds back to your battle for third. Detweiler on the outside, Roberts on the inside. Here comes the 01 of Stoltz and the 110 of Hanley. Oh, almost contact. They are neck and neck as they come down the front straight away and they go back side by side into the turns once again i told you roberts better make up his mind is that bottom line it's all but gone away at this point here on lap number 37 coming to 38. and the last time i looked that battle was between him and stoltz not him and detweiler <laughs> that's exactly right detweiler came in quick fast and in a hurry and he, oh man, three wide there between Roberts, Hanley, and and Stoltz. As Roberts currently still has the advantage in that three wide debacle there, but loses his podium for the time being. He's going to have to make a good run here as we come into two laps to go for that group back up front. It is all Adam Elby out front of everybody else. Elby working down the front straight away. White flag flies for driver 74 here out of California, the great state of California, represented tremendously here in the DOB 410 Countryside Stove and Chimney Sprint Car Series. That's Adam Elby picking up the win. D Rusty Kruger in easy second place. Darren Detweiler comes home third. Chris Roberts maintains fourth over Kyle Stoltz. Kevin Hanley in sixth. Randy Shreve seventh. Jake Greenwood eighth. Michael Heileman comes home ninth. Seven Golden rounds out your top ten. Mike Keegan going to bring it home 11th. Adam Buchanan 12th. Curtis Merriman 13th. Aaron Schaefer in 14th. Vinny Sansone and Jesse Bandy having to retire early, unfortunately, to round out tonight's field. Tremendously action-packed, quick, fast, and a hurry race there from the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series. And Pretty soon here, we're going to see some more fast-paced racing action with the Big Block Modifieds from the USA International Speedway. But first, we are going to await the arrival in victory lane of your driver making his first appearance in the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series this year and taking home a huge win here tonight. And well, the first one to jump in here was Darren Detweiler, your third-place finisher. So we'll, we'll go ahead and talk to him, Darren good run for you tonight you, you come in you kind of sneak by chris there in the latter half of the race and heck you wound up on the podium yeah i was not expecting to uh, end up where i was after my heat race uh i felt like i couldn't get the car underneath me and i just kind of threw a a huge change at the car to try something in the warm-up it got a little better and it's like well let's try this i threw another huge change at the car and it 
finally came to life in the feature, but I was hoping it would go up top when it didn't go up top. I just decided, okay, I'll, I'll play the throttle control game and just roll the bottom and hope for the best. And, uh, there toward the end, the car started to work better and better. Uh, and I kept getting to push the wing forward a little bit more each lap. And eventually it just, uh, got enough of a rhythm going with a long green flag run like that, that I was able to be in the right place at the right time to uh, capitalize. Well, it looked like there from about halfway on in the race, Darren, that the track was changing a good bit during the feature itself. And you were one that was able to get up off the bottom there. And that's kind of what gave you the momentum to get around the 93 of Roberts, who Chris was just, he was hugging the bottom the entire feature. Yeah, this track can change rapidly. Uh, something about Lanier, it can go top, bottom, middle, three different lines through the middle. A uh, slider line can come in. A diamond line can come in. You just have to stay on top of the track. And as soon as that bottom starts getting any kind of slick down there, uh, especially toward the exit of the corner, if it's slick on the exit of the corner, you have to use the banking to help you carry some speed. Otherwise, you're just in trouble immediately. All right, Darren. Well, one race left on the year. It's the dirt track at Charlotte. <laughs> Everybody's favorite. What Are you looking forward to that in a way? What's... What's going to be your big takeaway to, to come out of next week saying, hmm, I had a successful season here? Well, after the race tonight, uh, it was a big confidence booster that I'm finally starting to understand what I need to do to uh, keep this car moving forward later in the feature when the track really gets nasty slick. And Charlotte is one of those tracks that can really surprise you and become a really technical race really quickly. And after uh, the race I had last night in the 305s at Charlotte, where it got to be a really technical track that has my confidence up. And, uh, you know, really, if I can pull off a, a top five, top 10 to close out the season, I'd consider that a success with the, with the caliber of talent you race against here in DOB and just the difficulty of hanging on to a 410 as it is being able to run with this group of guys and actually make the feature and run well in the feature. That's a successful season to me. Oh, 100% now, Darren, before we let you get going here tonight and hopefully prepare for the Big Buck Modified Race coming up a little bit later, who would you like to thank on the race car? Who's helping you out? I got to thank everybody over at my race team, Most Wanted Motorsports. Those guys have, uh, they are instrumental in, in the success we're having. Everybody's trying different things, trying to find a little more speed here, a little more speed there. And they're a great group, a great group of guys to run with on a week to week basis. Everybody's always encouraging each other. We pick on each other. We have a good time, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. And I got to give a shout out to Detweiler Designs, uh, Design Metal Art, Jessup Logistics, Methanol Mafia. Uh, I got to give a shout to you guys over at uh, ESBN. I love the broadcast. Uh, it's fun being able to go back and watch it. And uh, shout out to Chris Roberts for this awesome league. All right, Darren. Well, congratulations on a podium finish here tonight, and we will see you next week at the Dirt Track at Charlotte. Once again, congratulations to Mr. Darren Detweiler. Thank you. And next, we'll send it back down trackside where Mr. Ben Bruno, he's standing alongside your second-place finisher tonight, Mr. Rusty Kruger. Ben, what you got for us, buddy? Rusty, another really great run for you here, getting back on the podium, this time in second. Walk us through what it was like as we heard Darren talk about the track changing quite a bit. How'd you make your way up there? Uh, I just got a pretty decent start there on the bottom there against Jake and Adam and basically held on for dear life after on the top, which I probably could have tightened myself up a little better. But, you know, Adam's the pro of the team and took me to school. So that's why he's running the real car on Saturday and I just get to be a wrench for him. Oh, it's funny that you mentioned that. I was saying uh, you're playing hide and seek with the wall there and weren't finding it for a while. Got caught up with it a little bit, and I alluded to what a hard charge that you made to work your way back around that battle with Stoltz and Greenwood and Chris Roberts. That was quite the finish that you had there. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I heard the in-game spars say inside, and I looked down, and I saw Chris Roberts. I was like, oh, what the heck? That's a good run for him. So, and then... You know, tried to follow his line. That's not really my strong point and kind of backed up there to fifth. But we were able to pound the boards down a little bit to rally back to second. But after that, unfortunately, LBO was about a whole straight ahead. So that's all I could get. And you were chipping away, Adam. I called it out at one point. Uh, what I was going to say, if somebody could correct me if I'm wrong here, 
I very well believe that you may have locked up the points championship for the DOB 410 mm-hmm. Spring Cars. How do you feel heading into uh, Charlotte knowing that you got that on lock? I mean, Charlotte's just going to be there mainly for bragging rights. And hopefully, if Chris is listening to this, he can let me do a little back row challenge and hopefully we can have a little more cars so I can put on a show here for the fans over at Esports Broadcasting Network. But it's an honor to be the next DOB champion. This is a pretty prestigious league. I mean, I have fun here every Thursday. I have been for the last three years, and it's just I'm pretty excited about it. And you put on a show week in and week out, man. No worries about any of that. Who do you want to thank for putting on these great shows every week? You just got to thank the boys over at Speed Lab and Slick. You know, they, they make the most comfortable setups possible for me. And, of course, Alby, as you saw, the race winner. And Jake Swanson Shocks for the virtual TSIs and Fastport Media and Viral Moto. We'll look forward to seeing you next weekend, see what uh, kind of challenge you guys can get worked up for you there at Charlotte. Thanks, boys. Once again, a congratulations on another good run here and a points championship for Mr. Rusty Kruger. And the last person that we have the pleasure of talking to before we hop on the fastest sim plane of all to get down to the USA International Speedway, Mr. Adam Elby coming in here wreaking havoc on the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series. Adam, it was a a, a good run for you here tonight. I, you've been in a lot of different cars on iRacing. You've been around for a long time. Was are, are sprint cars your strong suit or was this this just this this just something that you wanted to come in and try out one time? Uh yeah, you know, I'd say if anything, uh out of all the cars on here, maybe uh I might be a little bit better at midgets or uh, non wing cars than the wing stuff, but uh we definitely have a whole lot of work to do if we wanna, you know, be competitive with the with the with the real top guys, you know, the Bergerons and Merrimans and all them. Um so, yeah, I mean, I, I like to jump in everything, um, but yeah, I'd say the wing car is definitely where I, I, I will, you know, hop in and run the most. I, I've seen you in, in my years of watching iRacing, I've seen you do everything from late models to sprint cars, and it's it's good to know that you found a home here going forward. Do you, do you plan on running more of the DOB type stuff, or what's your schedule looking like for the, I guess, the rest of the foreseeable future? Uh, really, this is my second race probably in about two or three months, you know, after, uh, after some stuff, you know, on iRacing, just kind of, kind of burning myself out, you know, I just kind of getting on here and whatever league race is running that night and whatever is at a, you know, a track I enjoy, I'm, I'm just going to hop in and run it and just kind of keep this for fun. You know, we, uh, we grinded a lot for the pro series and, you know, several nights at DOB and other leagues and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, after so much, you just got to kind of take a step back and, so to be able to come here, you know, not racing a whole lot uh, on the sim is, you know, and to be able to come get a win, you know, I don't win too often anymore. Um, so it's 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 nice to be able to, you know, to, to come out and do that. Well, that being that, you're still one of the best in the game and you put on a fantastic showing with a teammate and colleague up front with Mr. Rusty Kruger. Yeah. You guys were throwing some slide jobs back and forth at each other there at about the halfway portion of the race was was there any friendly banter going along with that, or were you, were you guys just all in focus mode that whole time? Uh, well, you know, when we were racing, you know, I know Rusty's going to get plenty of room, and I think he knows that, you know, I'm, I'll am i I'll do the same. Um, you know, I, I, I did remember about maybe three quarters of the way through the race when uh, Chris Chris passed him. Rusty said, what the hell? And then I looked at my uh, relative, and I saw Chris is up to P2, so I was like, oh, what's he doing? You know, a lap goes by, Rusty doesn't say anything. I'm like, oh, what, what's Chris doing, Rusty? And he just, he's totally ignoring me because I think he wants to follow him and try and run me down. But uh, I just kind of kept plugging away at the top. I knew that, uh, you know, I, I went down there, tried it a little bit, um, and I, I just couldn't get a feel for it. I knew I could run the top hard enough to be able to maintain the gap that I had. And I think that I knew the bottom would end up going away a little bit. But I think uh, Rusty was getting a little quiet on me there. He was, he was, trying, he was trying to get me. He was, he was definitely trying. We could see it from watching the lap times. A lot of shots thrown at Chris Roberts here tonight. But, jeez, man, don't be so hard on that old timer. No, he's a gasser. Not oh, that at all. He 100% is. Chris has good runs week in, week out, and does a great I, job with this series. Like, like, you know, like Rusty said, it was just because we were both up on the top, and then, you know, you, you – it's not too often that the bottom comes away or the middle, you know, and you know, when it does, Chris is going to be there and, and he was. So, you know, I think Rusty tried to adapt and I tried to adapt and we just couldn't make it work like he was. 
Uh, I think it got lucky that I, you know, I kind of knew that the the line wasn't going to hold up for that long. Um, so I just kind of stayed committed to the top and, um, you know, even, um, even about in one and two, uh, middle high, you're really able to carry some good momentum. There's a lot of grip up there. So, you know, we didn't have to run against the fence the whole time, but three and four, the curb was massive. So it just, you know, you can carry speed down there, uh, pretty early on in the race. I tried the top of top of one and two bottom of three and four, then vice versa. And it's just, you can't carry enough speed around there to, to, for that to be good lap after lap, you know, you can get one good lap out of it and then it starts to slow you down. But so, yeah, I know a uh, good run by Chris, you know, that was a, uh, it's cool to see whenever them guys are able to make that work. Cause uh, I, I know I can't most of the time. Well, you stuck to your guns. You stuck to the high side. It got you a win here from the Lanier national speedway. Before we let you go, get ready for whatever you've got next. Who are we thinking on the race car here tonight? Yeah, we got to thank all the guys over at Swindell Speed Lab. Uh, you know, like Rusty said, they give us good setups, um, and it's just it makes our job that much easier. Got to thank all our partners, uh, Bell Helmets, Wise Organics, um, K1 Race Gear, Bear Archery. Uh, Got to thank you guys for, you know, you guys for broadcasting this, putting this on. I can't wait to go back and watch it. And then uh, Chris for everything he does. You know, he just year after year, he's just putting up countless races and just dedicating so much time for us to just come out and have fun so we can't thank him enough for that i thank uh my dad and my girlfriend for always support me and uh even rusty this weekend he's gonna come out and wrench on the on the micro so hopefully we don't hopefully we don't let him down too bad and uh we can put on another good show like we did tonight out at uh, out in the real car well, side, side note before we let you guys go I, I i think i'm gonna take a little bit of the credit for some of your and rusty's luck tonight i've been rocking my speed labs hoodie all day long so there y'all speed labs has some great apparel and some great sim racers as well once again congratulations mr adam lb on your win here tonight thank you guys So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for our portion of the broadcast from the Linear National Speedway with the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series presented by Countryside Stove and Chimney. Right quick, me and Mr. Ben Bruno, as well as Mr. Sam Cooper Bennett, are going to hop on the world's fastest sim plane and get down to the USA International Speedway for the DOB 410, or the DOB Big Block Modified Series presented by ESBN believe we're going to cut to a really quick commercial break and meet you right back here from the USA International Speedway. It is between two drivers for this championship. One, Lubomir Moritz of Positive Sim Racing. One, Paul Ilbrink of course, Crackles Online. Paul Ilbrink with a storming start. He's had to really work off the challenges. Or Ilbrink, no, pardon Ilbrink me. Off. The battle will rage and intensify.
Worth noting, it is between two drivers for this championship. One, Lubomir Moritz of Positive Sim Racing. One, Paul Ilbring of Sports Radicals Online. Paul Ilbring with a storming start. He's had to really work off the challenges. Or Ilbrink, oh, pardon Ilbrink me. Is off. The battle will rage and intensify. Boom, bang, bop, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that, we're back live with you here from the beautiful Lakeland, Florida at the USA International Speedway. The dirt variant for tonight's portion of DOB race night here with the DOB Big Block Modified Series presented by ESBN. There, as you see, Russell Berry taking a tumble down the front straightaway here during practice with about five minutes left to go in practice. Real quick before we get into tonight's events for the Big Block Modified Series, we'll give you a rundown of your current point standings. You've got Hanley on top of the points by two points over Mike Keegan. Then you got Chris Roberts, Brian Garris, Jeremy Prey, your top five, Joshua Pickle, Kyle Stoltz, Jeff Sharp, Kevin Click. Craig Laudermilch, your top 10 going into tonight's penultimate race of the season at the USA International Speedway. Last week, you saw Mason Hannigan pick up a big win at the Cedar Lake Speedway with Darren Detweiler finishing second. Jake Greenwood, Joshua Pickle, Daniel Blow, your top five here. And so far tonight from USA, it's Brock Garris on top of your practice standings as we sit. And what the points battle that we do have. It's been raging all season long. We're getting into the nitty gritty of the season. These guys are going to be battling harder than ever. Uh, really long straightaways here at USA. It's going to be an interesting race tonight. As Brock Harris and Mason Hannigan, the only two to land a 21 second lap thus far in practice. Garris with a 21 822 and Hannigan with a 21. 913, the next closest being Mike Keegan at a 22065. So, not a whole lot of disparity in time, but it is going to be quite a show here tonight. And USA, USA International is one of those really, really tricky racetracks to run here, whether it be late models, big block modified, sports and sprint cars, or whatever you have. If you're trying to run the bottom side of the racetrack, you got to turn in almost like you're racing Williams Grove. Turn in super, super early. Just about jump the little piece of dirt there on the bottom and try to stick it around the bottom side of the racetrack. But I think we're going to see a lot of these guys running middle to higher on the track as we move forward throughout the night here as they continue to file into the lobby. And we're going to see a pretty good show with hopefully 15 to 20 race car drivers for our second portion of DOB race night here on the eSports Broadcasting Network. And if you haven't yet, stop by the Twitch, the YouTube, the Facebook. Give those a follow, give them a like, hit the notifications bell, and you'll never miss a second of ESPN Broadcasting. Oh, that's uh, MX5 Pro Cup series they are all fantastic they absolutely are you're not going to find any better sim racing action than right here on your home for sim racing the esports broadcasting network here pretty much every day of the week usually except for sunday unless we have a majors event which are broadcasted on sundays and i'll possibly be roped into doing the next one of those as well i've been on the last two to three majors events they are always fun 
But our next broadcast right back here tonight, or tomorrow night, the Circle B Diecast Super Speedway Series will be live tomorrow night from the Daytona International Speedway at 8.20 p.m. right here on ESPN, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Well, we had quite the race for the 410 spring cars. Darren Detweiler came home in third, if I'm not mistaken. He had a really good run with those. Mike Keegan uh, also having a pretty decent run in the 410 spring cars earlier on. I always think that that plays a little bit of an advantage to these guys coming in. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of these guys have been in practice or running races this evening, but... Uh, you know, having that experience with uh, the high level of competition just before this one, I feel like gives them a nice little, you know, confidence booster heading in. Well, still all in all, those 410 sprint cars, nothing like the big block modifieds you're seeing here right now. Is you're carrying a lot more weight and a lot more, ho well, a lot more horsepower, but a lot more weight. So they even out in lap times there, go about the same speeds around this racetrack, of course. USA International, a lot different than Lanier National that we just came from. The USA International Speedway, it's a three-quarter mile dirt track. You're not going to find very many of those around the United States of America. So Lakeland is very, very different compared to pretty much any other track that you'll find. And right now, we're going to get right into qualifying here before we go into two heat races on the night with everybody going to the feature event. Later on in the evening, first guy is coming out. You see Keegan coming out as well as Hannigan, Sharp, Greenwood, Prey, Garris. So a lot of your front-running fast guys are coming out to cut qualifying times early on here. As they've only got two minutes to do so. Kevin Click now coming on to the speedway. Kevin Moyer, Chris Roberts. A handful of others have gotten their cars wound up. See what kind of lap times we get here. That's exactly right here. You're going to see a lot of guys this first lap do kind of what I do whenever I'm racing cars here at USA. Run the high side of the racetrack for the first lap to try and keep up some momentum and then let her eat during the second lap. Do you see there, Mason Hannigan currently sits quick time, 22-209. Kevin Hanley second, Brock Garris third, Jake Greenwood, Jeremy Prey. Ooh, make it Kevin Moyer rounding out your top five. And a lot of quick times, pretty tight grouping here. As you mentioned, Hannigan and Hanley just a couple hundredths of a second apart. Followed by Brock Garris with a three, a bunch of threes. And then a bunch of fours, a five, and a couple sevens right now. That's exactly right. Mason Hannigan is your current pole sitter. He is two one thousandths of a second faster than Kevin Hamley. And it's about five one hundredths back to Darren Detweiler, who has taken the third position. Russell Berry, the only car that doesn't look like he's going to take a time here. Aaron Schaefer, your last man. Looks like we'll have two heat races, eight in the first, seven in the second. Heat race number one, we'll see Mason Hannigan and Darren Detweiler, your front row. Jake Greenwood alongside Kevin Moyer, row number two. Jeremy Prey, Mike Keegan, row number three. Jeff Sharp, Russell Berry, row number four. Eight laps, the distance, all heck can and will break loose here tonight from the USA International Speedway. And you're absolutely right. Keegan, Greenwood, Detweiler, Hannigan, all going to be battling it out. I'd, I'd assume a uh, similar structure to what we just saw with uh, the 410 sprint cars as far as, uh, you know, who's going to advance and who's not. But for the time being eight laps four to the feature and kevin moyer going to be starting on that bubble spot next to jeremy prey a series regular here with the dob big block modifieds so you can never count him out oh that is 100 percent true here i mean 
You've, you've got Hannigan always up in the mix fighting with your two current points leaders. Like I said, Hannigan, he's only run a handful of races here with this big block modifying series. He's won two of them. He's ran three, won two, and he currently sits about 20th in the point standings. Hanley and Keegan are your top two, as we stated earlier, separated by now two points. Looks like the iRacing Chevy Silverado pace truck in turn four currently is going to come around and the lights will go out. And just like that, it's going to be race time here from the USA International Speedway in Lakeland, Florida. As the one to green signal, the popsicle sticks up in the air. Mason Hannigan, Darren Detweiler with a good run so far tonight in both series. Jay Greenwood's right there as well, ladies and gentlemen. Batten down the hatches, strap those belts tight because we are going racing here very, very shortly. Pick your favorite driver. Let us know in the comments who it is. Who do you think is going to come away with the victory here in heat race number one? My money right now is on Hannigan being as dominant as he has been, but somebody's got the big chance to prove old Ryan Williams wrong as we come into turn number four. The iRacing pace truck dips down off of the speedway. The green flag in hand. Hannigan fires. Here we go. Down the long front straightaway. And Greenwood and Detweiler side by side in an early caution. Ooh. It's Kevin Moyer there in the number 20, in the number 25 machine. Moyer up and over multiple times. Hard lick there. We'll see if we can go back and find out exactly what happened. Two driver number 25. He rode the wall like Tony Hawk all the way down the front straightaway. That he did. And uh, not too accustomed to seeing cautions in the heat races with these guys. Saw maybe maybe one last week or the week before that. Mm -hmm. But so lucky break here for him after... Uh, Trying to go Tony Hawk on us for the big block. That is exactly right there. So tough luck for Kevin Moyer as he will be out of this thing really before it even began. So Moyer in the 25 will have to back her down and try and redo it in the feature event coming up a little bit later tonight. Once again, the feature will be 30, 35 laps here for the big block modified series. Looks like we won't have a C or a B main. It'll just be all of these cars straight in to our 35 lap feature later on tonight right now it's all mason mason hannigan out front of your field of competitors as the lights are still on on the i racing pace truck We'll see. You you got Hannigan. I got Detweiler. Like I said, he's got that momentum coming off the four tens. Like he was saying when when we were talking to him, man, he's got a lot of confidence right now. So I got I got Detweiler. Well, that is one hundred percent a huge confidence builder coming into this portion of the night here and going forward to next weekend at the dirt track at Charlotte for Darren Detweiler, old Double D back there in the number three ten. He's trailing Mason Hannigan, though. Mason Hannigan, one of those drivers who is consistently fast week in, week out, as they head down the back straightaway here for the penultimate time before we go back. Green flag racing action. Jay Greenwood, tough luck so far tonight. Jeremy Proya, good run so far in this heat race. Mike Keegan back there in the X. He's had a tough night as well. He's going to try and do some damage here as we come into the last seven laps of this heat race. Green flag flies as the 1X. On the loud pedal down the front straight away. Here we go once again. Jake Greenwood falling a bumper behind Taryn Detweiler. Coming out of turn two. Followed by Jeremy Prey making his way around Mike Keegan. And as you stated, you know, that middle, middle top side of the track so far has been dominant early on in this heat race. 
that it has is that's what you're most likely usually going to see out of the USA International Speedway here on the iris and servers, of course. USA, one of those tracks that unfortunately not in business anymore when it comes to real life racing, but its legacy lives on right here on iRacing. And speaking of living on, living on up in the front of the race and pretty much dominating so far, it's been all Mason Hannigan with the field pretty single filed out here as we work into lap number four of eight. Down the back straight where they go, Hannigan with about six, seven car lengths over the two of Detweiler, and then it's another six, seven back to the 43 of Greenwood. So pretty cool common collected for all of these guys that are left on the racetrack. You're absolutely right, and Jeremy Cray was starting to reel in on Jake Greenwood a little bit. Now Mike Keegan has his calling card and followed by Jeff Sharp who has found some speed here on lap number five. Keegan has set out the hook line and sinker and he's beginning to reel in the 117 of praise the 43 of green with a big bobble there gonna cost him some momentum there that 28 machine of sharp now beating down the back side of the X of Keegan here Keegan's going to want the 117 of Prey to challenge the 43 of Greenwood so he gets another run. Greenwood is stuck there on the middle of the track. Prey on the high side. Keegan with a run to the bottom here as we work in the lap. Number 7-2 to go from the USA International Speedway for heat race. Number 1, Keegan. He's still beating down the back side of the 117. And Darren Detweiler had found some speed in the bottom or almost a, like slider hybrid line but just not able to make it stick quite as good as Hannigan through turns one and two so he's not able to gain that ground on him as Hannigan leads him down the back stretch and again into three and four for the final time here driver who's won through uh, two events with this series before gets his night off to an early start with a win in heat race number one Deadweiler comes home second with the 43 of Greenwood holding off Keegan Prey and Sharp to come home with, I believe, Brock Garrett. No, not Brock Garris. Let me go back. It was Russell Berry coming home in the seventh position, three seconds behind the rest of the pack. Kevin Moyer uh, did not finish here. Heat race number two comes out and been standing by with our lineup for that. Kevin Hanley going to find himself on the front row. First to the loud pedal for heat number two, followed by Brock Garris on the outside. Joshua Pickle in the 33, going to start inside row number two. Kevin Click in the 13, going to start fourth. Chris Roberts, fifth. Randy Shreve, sixth. And Aaron Schaefer rounding out the field in seventh. Well, if we've seen anything from Chris Roberts so far tonight, Chris is going to probably stick to the bottom side of the racetrack if I had to guess, but... We're going to see how well it works here from the USA International. Speedway worked pretty well at Lanier, but I cannot say that I would think it'd be the same for this event here. He's going to give Kevin Hanley the choice for the inside of the outside lane on the restart. Hanley looks like he's going to stick to the bottom here with that 64 machine of Garris to his outside. Joshua Pickle been a good, consistently fast runner all year long. Kevin Click is up there in the points as well. So a lot of your top running points guys are in this heat race number two. And that's the thing about, about USA. It's one of those tracks that as the slicker it gets, the better the racing gets. And as you can see, the marble's quite low on the track currently. A lot of life left in the track is the pace truck. Lights are out. That means it's time to do some racing here for the USA International Speedway. Hanley on the point. Garris to his outside. Hanley's going to have the fire first option in turn number four after the pace truck pulls off of the racetrack. Kevin Hanley, a guy we saw, had a good run with the DOB 410 Sprint Car Series earlier tonight. It's going to look to capitalize on some of that momentum here in the big block modified series presented by ESBN as he is going to lead us to the green hopefully we'll get the whole shot into turn number one and hopefully for that driver he's gonna think that he will have this one all locked up if he can be the first one to get into turn number one here that's the way that the first heat race went it may be the way that the second one goes here 
as the Chevy Silverado iRacing pace truck dips off. Handley got a fire here as they hook up, heading to turn number one. Here we got a big shuffle for the second and third position here as Garris is getting challenged into turn number one. And that's absolutely right. Just one really tight battle there in the middle right now between three or four cars. Pickle sliding way up the track. Some contact between him and the 77 of Aaron Schaefer. And Aaron Schaefer not going to benefit from that. Well, the first contact there was between Pickle and the 13 of Click as Click. Had, had a little bit of a, of the nose to the bumper there. That forced Pickle to get tight, move up the racetrack, and he's fallen back into the clutches of the number 56 of Randy Shreves, who had a good run earlier tonight, looking for another good run here with the big block. Modified series, Aaron Schaefer back there battling with the 93 of Roberts. Those two are race control here for the DOB series. <laughs> and they are currently racing for the last position on the racetrack there. Roberts, a guy that we saw had a good run about three weeks ago in a heat race where they went three wide for most of it, but tonight looks like it's going to be a little more cool, calm, and collected. Kevin Hanley out front by a little over a car length. Brock Garrison second. Kevin Click, your top three so far, four laps into this thing. And Chris Roberts able to get around Aaron Schaefer for that sixth spot with a really nice slider. I was able to catch it. Randy Shreve's in fifth right now. The tightest battle is right there between mm -hmm. Kevin Click, Brock Harris, and Kevin Hanley now. Gonna get passed on the inside by Brock Harris. He's gonna respect him a whole lot. Stick to the bottom, see if he can make it stick. He does. Well, new leader in the now, it's Brock Harris, Hanley fighting back on the outside. Then you got Click right there in the mix as well. Hanley right now has the advantage on the outside with forward momentum. Gets a little bit of that forward bike coming off of the corner, but into turn number three, you see there, Garris just gets a little bit better of a run into the corner on the bottom side. And he's going to hold the momentum down the front straight away. He's going to lead the lap, but it's still Hanley coming hard on the outside with two laps to go. Oh, Garris went sideways for driver number 64 there as Hanley gets right back around him. Crisis averted for Hanley, but crisis not averted there for Brock Garris. And Kevin Click coming to life. As you can see, the, the marble's starting to get pushed up a little bit. There's a lot of momentum on that top side. Brock Garris able to hold him off for now, and Joshua Pickle is absolutely salivating watching these guys go at it. That is exactly right. We are on lap number eight. The white flag has been waved for Hanley up front. Click. Garris battle for second here. Who's going to take it to the line? It's a drag race down the front straightaway. Give it to Garris with Click third. Pickle fourth. Shreves fifth. Roberts Schaefer rounding out the field here for heat race number two, which looks like it's going to send us straight into the A main after a redraw and a warm up. And what a battle they had the top four. That was really anybody's race there. Is oh. Kevin Hanley able to hold on? Oh, 100%. Brock. And then Brock Garris there just about bit the dust. Good job by that driver to save it. Salvage a second place position there. Heat race number two. So Garris, as it stands, would roll off fourth. And they're getting right into their... Um, redraw here. Mason Hannigan draws a number six, so he'll start from sixth. Kevin Hanley drew the pole. He will start on the bowl for the main event. Darren Detweiler draws a number three. Brock Garris will roll off from the fourth position. Jake Greenwood will start second. And then they will have, I believe it was... Uh, I can't exactly see who. Let's see who finished last or er, third, fourth, third in heat number two. Kevin Click 
will be your last man drawing that other position here. They will get out for a warm-up session before the uh, feature event, the 35 lap feature coming up in just a little bit. Right quick, they're going to get out there, try and slick and off this USA Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, watching at home, sit back, relax, and listen to the sounds of these mighty machines here with the DOB Big Block Modified Series. Absolutely beautiful sounds there coming from the engines of these big block modifieds here on the iRacing services. Once again, the DOB Big Block Modified Series is presented by us at the e at the Esports Broadcasting Network, where you can find us live pretty much every night of the week, ranging from times from 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on throughout the night. You can find us right here or on Facebook. Or on Twitch, if you just look up the Esports Broadcasting Network or ESBN. Give us a like, give us a follow, drop a subscribe, hit the notification button. Keep up to date with everything ESBN. And we are also brought to you by, I believe, Design Metal Art, Alex Bergeron, Setup Shop, Rocket Racing Setups, as well as our fine partners at... Oh, diecastnuts.com. There it was. I couldn't find it in my head. <laughs> One thing I struggle with. I didn't have a list in front of me, and there it went. <laughs> but, Ben, we, we've had a pretty good night thus far here. Rather quickly moving along in this event. So, a lot of room for some great racing coming to us from this feature event here at momentarily. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I said, uh, the slicker this track gets, the uh, the more racy it is, because it kind of, you know, when it's when it's really hammered down here, it's pretty dominant in one spot on the track. So if you can get out front, you're you're pretty smooth sailing. But as it gets slick, uh, you really have to work for it, and it really comes down to margin of air more than anything. So these guys are gonna run this track in for a little while, get some rubber to it, uh, widen out those marbles. Like I said, you know, they're they're honestly pretty pretty low on the track yet the marbles are so um gonna be a really good feature event. Gonna see a lot of movement I think here in the feature because you just don't have room for the mistakes. And uh in in the warm up right now, Mason Hannigan has clicked the uh quickest lap with a twenty two five five nine. So uh a little bit less than a second slower than where we started at uh, in practice, as he was one of the only guys to click off a 21 second lap in practice and has been fast all night. Well, that is exactly right. But again, Hannigan, one of those guys that you're expecting to be lightning quick night in, night out. Jay Greenwood, one of those guys as well, is he second quick so far in the warm up? Hanley, Pickle, Garris, Detweiler, all fast as well here. So we've got a lot of room for imp improvement and a lot of room for great green flag racing action coming up very, very shortly. I think they're going to take probably two to three more minutes to try and get this track as slick as possible so we could see some insane slide jobs and some great racing here from the USA International Speedway. Once again, big, big thanks to Mr. Chris Roberts for putting up this series and all of the great work that he does for the DOB Sprint Car Series and the Big Long Modifieds that come to you right here every Thursday night on ESPN. White Flag has waved on the warm-up session, said race control. So, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to those hats. Very, very soon we are going to go racing for 35 laps. Certainly going to want to grab a... Uh 
a refill on your beer cooler or your popcorn or your chips and uh hang on tight because uh it's gonna be a really good show here these guys never let us down that's for sure oh you are 100 percent right go grab you some popcorn grab you a refill on your good old beverage alcoholic or non-alcoholic and have a good old time here with us for the next 30 minutes or so as we get right into the starting lineup for your dob 410s or your dob big block modifying series it's going to be a little bit shaken up from what the grid shows you currently again it was hannigan drawing sixth he'll go from the pole to six hanley i believe drew first detweiler should have drew i believe fifth and we'll see in just a second but we can go from seventh on back right now with prey starting seventh Pickle starting 8th, Keegan starting 9th, Shreves 10th, uh, Sharp 11th, Roberts 12th, Barry 13th, Schaefer 14th, Moyer 15th, and we'll find out what your top 6 drew here momentarily. So your top six will line up with Hanley right there on the pole. As was stated, it's Hanley. Then you go back to Jake Greenwood, Darren Detweiler, Brock Garris, Kevin Click, and Mason Hannigan, your top six with the rest of the field falling in behind. Looks like we're going to get one to go to green this time by at the starting stripe. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it will be on like Donkey Kong for the DOB Big Block Modified Series. So we're not going green here. They are getting one to go to green. So two to go to green this past time by. We're going to come around to the popsicle stick in the air. And if you're watching from home, drop a comment on who you want to win tonight and where you're watching from. We'd love to know where you guys are at and hope that you're enjoying the broadcast as much as we are. We do this every Thursday night with the doubleheader as both series going to be heading over to Charlotte next week. So stay tuned for that. Oh, 100% going to be a big, big night at the Charlotte Motor or the Charlotte Dirt Track next Thursday night for both the 410 Sprint Car Series and the Big Block Modified Series. As these co guys come by, it says green flag on your screen, but trust me, it's one to go to green as they figure out all of their black flags for your top six as they had realigned 35 laps will be the distance here with the big lock modifying series as they line up nose to tail side by side all the way through the field ladies and gentlemen it is almost showtime here from the usa international speedway kevin hanley gonna lead the field down into turn three greenwood on the outside the battle to who can get to the loud pedal first as it's going to be Hanley's job to do so. See if these guys can get a good start as Hanley gets on the gas and leads the field. Feature racing here tonight for the hmm. Dirty Old Bastards Big Block Modified Series. Big shuffle through the middle of the pack there. Pickle made some contact with the back of Hannigan. He shuffled backwards. Hannigan starting to mount his charge already bringing pickle right along with him garris there as well sitting in the sixth position right now 110 machine of hanley currently your leader here jake greenwood providing a challenge from the second position as well darren detweiler old dibble d still with a good run here on lap number three currently in the third position don't look now it's mason hannigan on the move as he moves into fourth now challenging for third and pickle Struggling early on here to find his groove. Mike Keegan beaten down on him. A little bit of contact last lap by as he and, and Prey down on the bottom. Almost three wide here in turns one and two. As you can see, the race surface getting extremely racy. Look at this man. Chris Roberts making some moves back there. The back this time riding the high side up back towards the front. 
the 1X of Hannigan's made his way around the 13 machine of Click. And the two of Deadweiler here is Hannigan now into second as he gets by Greenwood on the bottom. Never mind, Greenwood fires back on the top here. So Hannigan on a charge early. It's going to be interesting to see if he can get by your leader, Hanley. As Hanley's running a pretty consistent lap time at the bottom every time around the race track here. So it's Hannigan into second, Greenwood third, click fourth. And Darren Detweiler falling back into the fifth position and into the hands of Brad Garris and Joshua Pickle here as they battle side by side for sixth. Chris Roberts now going to work on Mike Keegan for that eighth spot. And the 117 of Jeremy Prey taking notes from Keegan as he's making that momentum work. And this is an open setup, so he, everybody's car kind of suited to their driving style and what's going to make them the fastest. See how that plays out for them as the stretch goes on. Big battle up front here on lap number seven. Hannigan and Hanley right now going at it for the lead. Greenwood sitting in, waiting in the wings right now to see what happens between these two up front. Hannigan seems to be just a little bit quicker. Lap in, lap out, going along the bottom side out of turn number two and into three. Hanley banged down to the bottom. Hannigan played a little cat and mouse with him, got up on the outside, and he's going to have a run going down the front straight away here as we work into lap number nine. Eight laps down, Hannigan started six, he's in second, and he is looking to the inside of Hanley coming off at of turn two, but that momentum really holding up as they go door to door into turn three. Hannigan going to opt to stick to the bottom side of the speedway, it looks like it's going to pay off as he's pulled just clear as we have a new leader at the flag. How Hannigan's able to make that bottom side of work right now, I will never, ever know here. The 110 of Keegan jumps back down to the bottom side, or Hanley jumps back down to the bottom side and back up to the top here. Right now, if he just stays where he's at, he will take will retake the points lead over Mike Keegan. Jake Greenwood still waiting in the wings back there, now battling with the 13 machine of click. There, Pickle made his way around Darren Detweiler. So Pickle into fifth, Detweiler back to sixth. Hannigan starting to mount a charge ahead of the 110 of Hanley here as he's pulled in by about six car lengths as of right now. Chris Roberts, solid top 10 so far, still working down the backside of Mike Keegan as we go into lap number 12. And Greenwood was sticking true to the bottom. Now moves up to the top side as Kevin Click is breathing down his back for that third spot. Joshua Pickle and Darren Detweiler in the fifth and sixth spot as Brock Garris trying to see if he can make his way back inside of the top five. That's exactly right. Mason Hannigan out to an over one second lead just that fast over Kevin Hanley. Hannigan's been pretty dominant every race he's run here with the Big Block Modified Series. Other than that, we're pretty even single filed out right now. And now Chris Roberts still working on the back of Mike Keegan there. Hanley still in second. It's Keegan and Hanley, the two front runners for the points championship right now. The advantage would go back to Hanley if it finished the way that it currently is. And Jake Greenwood taking a look to the inside of Hanley now. As him and Click have been reeling him in lap after lap. Not able to get it done yet, but he's definitely got the bottom side of three and four figured out as he's able to gain a ton of ground on him. See if he can make his way to the podium here yet again. Pretty clean, straightforward racing so far here. Battle back at the back of the pack between Schaefer and the 56 of Randy Shreve. Schaefer around him on the outside, and then your next guy's backer, Kevin Moyer, Jeff Sharp, Russell Berry. Those are your last three on the track as Mason Hannigan begins to work his way towards them to put them a lap down. 1.735 second advantage over Hanley for Hannigan. And right now, Hanley, he's got a rearview mirror full of the 13 of Click and the 43 of Greenwood as they continue to jostle back and forth for the third position. And that's the battle I've been watching these last couple laps is Kevin Click you know, just looking for this mistake of these two battling. And if they make a little bit of contact, it's going to be 
Oh, Kevin Click. Well, the man who's wanting and wishing right now at the back of the pack is the ex of my Keegan. Keegan is wanting both of those cars to get around the 110 of Hanley and, and for Keegan to get around the 3 and the 64. That would preserve his points lead if it were to finish that way. But as we sit right now, he will, he would lose his points lead to Hanley or, or Hanley would extend his points lead over Keegan. My bad. Keegan is two points back of Hanley. Hanley currently your points leader. Keegan in second by two points. So Keegan wants Hanley to not extend that points lead. Keegan wants to retake that points lead if he could get around the two and the 64 and catch up to the 110 machine and make a pass. He would retake the points lead. But so far still a neck and neck battle there for the fifth position between Garris and Detweiler. Or for the sixth position between Garris and Detweiler. Pickle out in front of them in the fifth position in the 33P. And then nose to tail, nose to tail for second, third, and fourth between Hanley, Click, and Greenwood there as they all trail Mason Hannigan. That's absolutely right. And uh, Mike Keegan trying to make the best of it. And Darren Detweiler, I noticed, had uh, fallen back a little bit as he's now taking a look to the inside of Garris and Mike Keegan still working away at the top side. That's exactly right with the 43 of Greenwood getting around the 110 of Hanley here. Going to clear him down the front straight away. The 13 machine. Oh, he's next. He makes contact with the 110 and he saves it just barely. But he's going to lose some positions and that could cost him dearly here for Hanley. Contact with the 13 sends him just about all the way around. So Hanley is going to have to do some rebounding here if he wants to maintain that points lead and extend it out even further over Keegan. And Mason Hannigan, because of that, now out to a three-second lead over Greenwood. That was the battle to watch there, lap after lap after lap. Hannigan made very, very quick work of it coming from six to first in about seven laps there. And since then shot off like a rocket. The driver in the 1X out of Indiana knows exactly what he's doing behind the wheel of a big block modified here. That's why he's one of the best in the business coming here wrecking, wreaking havoc on the entire big block modified group of the dirty old bastards week in week out battle right now for the third position between click on the outside the 33p of pickle on the inside pickle clears him in turn number three and that's gonna be big for keegan uh with him falling back to fifth off of that little shuffle there now only two spots behind hanley so that's gonna be huge for him in that points difference that you mentioned. Well, we're getting into the nitty gritty of this race. Now, if Keegan's got anything to try and catch Hanley and retake his points lead, he's got to do it right now. He's still battling with the 64 of Garrish. You look ahead of them about a half a straightaway. There you'll find Kevin Hanley. So either way, the points, they're not going to be shifted too much because of this race. With Hanley getting out front, not running for points. Pickle sitting pretty far back. Greenwood pretty far back as well it's all between Hanley and Keegan right now Keegan scored in the seventh position Hanley in the fifth position so it's it'd be as we sit right now I believe a four point advantage for Hanley going into the last race at Charlotte here as we come into lap number 28 and Joshua Pickle has Ooh. caught Kevin Click contact gets tight from the contact big lift there for Pickle to not send him around and uh as i was mentioning was catching up to him quick so joshua pickle trying to punch his ticket to a podium finish that's exactly right but i don't believe at this point in the race anybody's catching mason hannigan up there in the one x machine hannigan off like a rocket here greenwood still second click now third pickle has fallen back into the clutches of Kevin Hanley. Garris and Keegan are trying to track him down as we speak. Chris Roberts, a good run for him as well. He currently sits in the eighth position. And 
Mason Hannigan has grown on that lead quite a bit. Last time that I had mentioned, I know Ryan had interjected at one point, now up to 3.9 seconds of a lead for Hannigan. Four seconds now over Greenwood, followed by Click and Pickle as Hanley starting to reel them back in. And then a good, good gap back to Brock Garris and Mike Keegan in seventh. Chris Roberts from 12th inside of the top 10 at eighth, followed by Jeremy Prey and Darren Detweiler rounding out the top 10. And Mason Hannigan taking us to the white flag this time by. And a caution, a late race caution. Let's see if I can catch up and see who it was here. Not quite the white flag just yet, but it is Hannigan still your leader late race caution i'm sorry I, I had a mic on mute there for a couple of laps but the action was hot and heavy for the third place position as pickle, pickle was able to get around the 13 of clicks so that puts pickle in the podium spot so far and we're gonna have to back him down and do it one more time here is this gonna be a green white checkered That's going to hurt very, very badly there, Mike Keegan. Your second place on points was your at fault for the caution there. If we can see exactly what happened, you're watching it there on the ESPN replay. Let's see what exactly happened to Keegan here. Just gets up into the wall all by himself and goes around about 100 times before he comes to a rest up at the top of the track. Collected the 117 of Prey. But luckily for Keegan's going to be able to continue on here tonight and not lose too many points to Kevin Hanley as we head into the last week of the season next week at the Dirt Track at Charlotte. And if you're Mason Hannigan, that is not what you wanted to see. Is uh, Jake Greenwood's been quick tonight, making his way forward, and that's who Hannigan's going to have in his mirror for this restart. Oh, that is exactly right there. Handing and choosing the inside for the inside option. If there is one, we should be single file here on the restart with Hannigan, Greenwood, Pickle. Click Hanley, your top five going into it. Looks like one to go to green, green, white, checker style here for the DOB Big Block Modified Series. It'll be interesting to see here, Ben, if Greenwood was saving anything for late in the race here. If Greenwood can get a run on the man who's been so dominant in the 1X up there, Mason Hannigan. Same for Joshua Pickle. Pickle could be saving all of his marbles for an end-of-race run here. Kevin Hanley's down on the bottom side of the racetrack trying to cool off those tires just a little bit. I would guess as we come into turn number three, Pace truck will have already exited the track. Hannigan playing some mind games with the rest of the field here. As he's falling off of the pace truck, very fires going into turn number four. Greenwood with a good run off of it as well. We're green for the white and checker here at USA International. And Greenwood sticking way up high. Hannigan electing to go low out of turn two as he pulls a little bit of a gap on him. Pickle taking a look to the top. And a blitz back into the front straightaway is Hanley on the top side. Hannigan with just so much forward bite coming off of the bottom of the corners. Extends his lead out off of turn number two here. He's taking the white flag 
has the 43 machine of Greenwood in his rearview mirror who might get challenged by the 33B of Pickle. Pickle to the top side of the racetrack looking for a late race run at second here. It's going to be Hand again, your winner. But who's it going to be in second? It's going to stay Greenwood Pickle third. Who got fourth there was Hanley at the line. Hanley got fourth over Click Garris. Yes, Hanley got fourth over Click Garris sixth. Chris Roberts seventh. Jeremy Prey eighth. Darren Jetweiler, 9th, Aaron Schaefer, 10th, Russell Perry, 11th, Jeff Sharp, 12th, Mike Keegan, unfortunately, comes home in 13th, losing some points there to Kevin Hamley. Kevin Moyer comes home 14th, Randy Shreves rounds out your field in 15th. Ladies and gentlemen, what a green-white checker there for the battle for the fourth position. And they, they put on quite the show there for the end for that one for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. It was something to watch there is... They were nearly three wide there coming off, and uh, what a battle to come to the, to the flag stand. Absolutely, as we await the arrival of our three podium finishers here first, we'll walk down trackside, get a word with the man who dominated the, the Big Block Modified Series once again here tonight. It's Mr. Mason Hannigan. Mason, he, a bad draw for you drawing the sixth position here tonight, but... You show just how dominant you are. Got it done in quick fashion. Yeah, I would have preferred to start dead last. Honestly, it would have been a lot more fun. Um, it was. I was kind of hoping I was going to be able to do it because because uh, of the small box and it's, you know it's really fun going from the back to the front and um, just kind of creates more of a challenge and um, to see how well you can drive and get through traffic. Well, not to toot your own horn here, but. Like you said, you, you thought that you could have done it from the back to the front. It, no knock to these guys that run this series, but it just seems like every time you show up for these events, you're, you're on a different level. Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. It's just kind of, I don't, I, I like these cars and they drive well and I just, I kind of find the line a little bit quicker than some people do. And, um, you know, the setup's just always hooked up. I don't, you know, I don't have any issues that it's never going to be hooked up and, um, yeah, we were, I mean, we were really good tonight. I, you know, I found the line and warm up there and, um, I mean, got up to the front and I think it was seven or eight laps there and it was just hooked up from there on out. Well, from there you cruised right on home for the rest of the 35 lap feature. We look forward to next week, the final event on the season. Currently, will we see you at the dirt track at Charlotte? And what are some of your expectations there? If you do show up, I yeah, just rip down the fence is what I'm going to expect. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes from there. And, um, I mean, I just have a lot of fun in these cars, and they're a handful and a blast to drive. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll just uh, we'll see how it pans out. Definitely, Mason. And once again, before we let you get going here tonight, to celebrate your third victory of the season, who would you like to thank on the car who's helping you out nowadays? Yeah, Black Time Motorsports. I uh, can't thank him, guys. To beat you up, 51. Uh, I'm starting to make the big block setups. Um, you know, I can't thank Tim Sims, UDTV, and uh, can't thank Chris putting on this league. And thank you guys for broadcasting it. And uh, good run to Jake and Josh. All right. Well, once again, for the third time this year, Mason Hannigan finds himself in victory lane. Mason, congratulations. We'll hopefully see you next week at Charlotte. Up next, we walk down to your second place finisher here tonight with the Big Block Modified Series, Mr. Jake Greenwood. Jake, a, a tough run for you earlier with the 410 Sprint Car Series, but you rebound in a big way here, pulling off a nice second place finish with the Big Block Modifieds. Yeah, it definitely feels good after missing the setup really bad over there in the 410s, but uh, um, definitely a lot of confidence from Wednesday night. I actually picked up a 358 win. Uh, with the OB, so um, usually I'm not too confident when it comes to these modifieds, but uh, I'm kind of getting there, I, I feel like. Well, you absolutely are, and we saw some big battling there between you and Kevin Click for the most part of that race, and then take us through what was happening in your head there. It seemed like about halfway through that run that Click just stopped hitting his marks so much, and you were able to find the lane around. I'm not really uh, sure what happened there. I 
at first I wasn't sure how fast I was going to be, and I I typically don't know where to run on the track. Usually someone's got to show me the the fast line before I can uh, get going there. So uh, at first there I wasn't too sure where to run at, and uh, finally found a line that started working for me. I think, or maybe he lost it. I'm not sure what the difference maker was there, but uh, I definitely got comfortable there, kind of toward the middle of the race. Definitely did, and it led you to a good, good finish there. And, Jake, we look forward now. Obviously, you'll probably be running the 410 Sprint Car Race at Charlotte next week, a doubleheader. It's Charlotte. What are some of your expectations for both the 410 Sprint Car Race and the final race for the Big Block Modifieds at Charlotte? Well, I'm not sure here when it comes to the Big Blocks, but uh, if I know anything about the Sprint Cars, it's going to be ripping around the fence there. So, uh Probably should do my homework there in the uh, big blocks and see kind of what the track race is like here on iRacing and uh, see what I can do. Well, we're coming down to the nitty gritty, but it's always good to talk to you up here on the podium. Jake, before we get out of here for the night, shout us through some of your sponsors. Who's helping you out nowadays? Definitely the most honored motorsports guys. Um, I wouldn't be running these cars if it wasn't for them. So having them walk me through it and help me out the best they can is uh is great for sure um design metal art check them out on facebook they got really cool uh customizable race fan uh stuff that you can get um jessup logistics uh methanol mafia um that while our designs for the awesome looking rap and uh can't say enough about chris roberts and you guys coming on board here for this kind of last half of the season doing the broadcast for these things that is exactly right, Jake. Once again, congratulations on your second place finish here tonight, building some momentum towards Charlotte next Thursday. And last, but certainly not least, we're going to send it back down trackside once again, where Mr. Ben Bruno is standing by with your third place finisher, Joshua Pickle or Pickel. Firstly, key us in on how you say your last name, and then Ben's going to take it over. It's Pickel, but uh, I think you guys might be muted. I don't, but let me check. Uh, believe we are good. Ben, if you're there, why don't you take over down there on trackside? I am, uh, Josh. Another really good run here for you. Take us through how you marched your way from eighth to a podium finish. Um, this, geez, that was a rough one. Uh, it was just being consistent, really. Um, there was a, good battle between i think second third and fourth and i was just kind of uh hanging out in fifth running them down and um yeah i battled with uh kevin click right there for geez it seems like it was 10 laps but uh i got around him and then the caution came out but uh yeah all in all the car felt pretty strong tonight um yeah happy with the third and and you know it seems like it's something that we've grown accustomed to you know week in and week out always really fast, but seem to prey on the mistakes of others. Uh, how much did that come in to effect for you getting on the podium tonight? Yeah, um, big time. Uh, it was um, it was quite rough. Uh, I think everyone who at least was in front of me was pretty much running the same groove. So uh, it was just who could get a better drive coming off the corner and uh, get next to them. And you did just that a whole night, that's for certain. Heading next week to Charlotte for the finale in the big block modifieds, is that something that's going to play to your strengths, or is that something that uh, you're just going to try to do the best that you can and get out of there? Uh, I'm not sure how I am in the big blocks. Uh, I definitely like the track. Um, but, uh, yeah, I feel like we got a pretty strong car. Um, it should be all right. And who do you want to thank here tonight for uh, getting you back up on the podium once again? Yeah, I got to thank all the boys over at uh, Most Wanted Motorsports um, for all the help uh, getting me to where I am today, uh, all the practices and tuning that we go through. Um, Detweiler Designs, really awesome looking car. Um, Methanol Mafia Productions, uh, Design Metal Art. Uh, Chris Roberts for putting on this great league and uh, you guys over at eSports Broadcasting Network for uh, putting it on. 
Well, thank you very much for giving us something to commentate on, and we look forward to seeing you next week at Charlotte. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. So those are your top three interviews done and dusted. Two amazing events in the books here tonight from both the Linear National Speedway and the USA International Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, we do sincerely hope that you enjoyed everything that you saw here tonight. Go look up the Dirty Old Bastards League on iRacing. Drop them a follow. Join the league if you think that you, if you've got if you think that you got what it takes to join that league, get in there with the Dirty Old Bastards guys every Wednesday, Thursday night on the iRacing services. Drop us a follow and a like over on our ESPN Facebook page as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel and following our Twitch page right here at the Esports Broadcasting Network. But stay tuned. Tomorrow night, 8.20 p.m. Eastern, the Circle B Diecast Super Speedway Series from the Daytona International Speedway will be coming at you faster than you know it, ladies and gentlemen. So get ready for that broadcast. But for tonight, I've been Ryan Williams along, for, along with Mr. Sam Cooper Bennett up in the control tower and Mr. Ben Bruno, my broadcast partner. We bid you a goodbye and a good night here from the USA International Speedway.